So tonight I'm going to review this battery tester thing. So this is a 12 volt and 24 volt tester. This is supposed to be no cost or bang good for purpose of review. And it gives you like a state of health of your battery, so it checks the internal resistance. So it's got a few different testing methods on there, different criteria it uses. I don't actually know what the difference is between these criteria, but uh, it does CCA, IEC, SAE, EN, DIN, and CA. And it tests standard type, AGM, gel, and EFB. And it gives you a state of health, gives you battery voltage, internal resistance. It also goes EDC as well. And this gives you an idea of how healthy your battery is. I'm going to go to another room shortly and test some batteries. Now I actually got some UPS batteries. They're actually big 130 amp hour batteries which are from a motorhome and they were being used on a UPS. Now they're exhausted their life in a the motorhome. They were starting to have a bit of um, issue with drawing high currents on them but they still had a lot of life left in them. I expect to get probably another three or four years out of them running as a UPS supply. I've done that before and they work for years and it's way cheaper than buying SLA batteries. Unfortunately, those got drained down to 7 volts because the UPS power got turned off and the batteries got down to 7 volts, which is really not good. They're probably dead. They're probably ruined. But I'm going to try and recover them. We're going to see where we go. So I'm going to look at those batteries on this tester, both before and after charging. We'll see what the results we get from this compared to what it should actually be like. Anyway, we'll have a look at this thing. Here's the basic in the face. Hard metal case. It's got a little guide on the back here, let's get close to this. There you go, so for different amp hours, it gives you an approximate CCA rating, right? So, I've got 130 amp hour batteries, maybe the 120s, maybe to 120s, and this is 700 amps CCA. Well, there's no way they're going to do that. And they're gel batteries, so don't tend to work that same way. They're meant for long life, low discharge rate and that sort of stuff, rather than high currents. So there's no way that that's going to do that. I think the actual spec for the battery is 500 amps max. So there's the cock clips in there. This is where the wire actually connects us to this bit here. So that has to go to the terminal. If you want to clip on the outside here, it won't work. That's the bit that has to make contact with the battery connections. Same on the red one, obviously. Also you've got the nice long leads on these, about, say, about 70 centimeters or so for those. Manual. There won't be much to see in here. I'll just quickly flip through it and you can read it yourself in your own time. If you want to read these, just pause the video and have a look. Let's power it up and let's actually have a look at it. Alright, so I've got this connected up to my power supply now. I'm going to turn the power on and we'll see what happens. Okay, here you go. Here's the screen. Let's have a close look. Have a screen protector. Shall I peel it off? Nah, I'm going to leave it on. So we can choose types. And let's go through the process, shall we? So escape does nothing. Up and down. So we've got standard, AGM, gel, EFB. Anyway, let's do AGM. Perimeter 2 is this type, so you've got CCA, IEC, and so on. So let's do CCA. 3 is EDC, so that's the actual current. Estimated discharge current, I'm guessing that means. I'm guessing that's what it means. Do one more, it's going to do a test. This is testing my power supply. So this is the internal resistance of my power supply, which is 51 milliohms. 11.9 uh, volts and 46 amps, it reckons, based on the internal resistance. Interesting. This is drawing 21 milliamps in itself, just sitting here like this. I'm guessing most of that would be the illumination and the backlighting there. A little bit 9 volts. I mean, I've got the power supply set to 12 volts, so it's very slightly down. 0.1. This is what you get. State of health and a status, right, replace it or whether it's okay or, or whatever, depending on what your CCA ratings are set to. Do reset. Okay, it goes back to the beginning. So I'm guessing these do different criteria. I'm not sure what EFB means. So that's basically how we use it. As far as what these different methods are, I actually do not know, but I tend to always just default to CCA because that's kind of one that makes sense to me. These are obviously different testing standards for different battery specs, I suppose. So maybe if you know what these are for, then you could use that. I mean, maybe your battery has one of these markings on it. Maybe it has SAE on the battery or something, and you'll be able to then reference that or the DIN marking or something like that. You know, if it mentions one of those, if it says SAE or DIN, maybe then you base it on a CCA marking on the battery. So let's have a look at this tester on these batteries here. I've got two batteries. Now, recently, these both went flat. They actually went very flat. They were down to 7 volts, which is really not good. Now, these are AGM batteries, which were for my motorhome, and they were actually being used on this UPS sitting over here. I've done a modification previously. I showed it on video. I modified one as UPS to basically use two big batteries instead of two of those small SLA batteries. 
I actually built a second one, which is what this is, this is the second one, which is for my stepson. Anyway, he moved out and he turned the power off everything, which is fine, but he turned off the power to the UPS and he didn't let me know. And I only just realized that he'd done that. And so it, basically, because the power was off to the UPS, it's been running off the batteries and it's just completely drained it all down. Anyway, I've been charging these up a little bit, quite gently, and the cell on the right needs charging more yet. It's only around 12 volts or so sitting on that. This one's been charging overnight and it's basically fully charged. Um, we'll see what the tester thinks of it, shall we? So we've already done a test on it. Let's just do another one. So basically I'll do a reset, so start again. So you choose which battery type you want. All right, so there's a standard battery there. Um, AGM, gel, EFB, I'm not sure what that is. A bit standard again. So this is an AGM, so I've selected AGM. Do enter. Then you set the next parameter, so it's P2. So CCA, I don't actually have any ratings on these. All I know is the amp hour rating. And it says maximum current is 30 amps, stated on the top. So these are basically meant for low current, but long term use. If you want a decent supply current, you need to stack a bunch of these things in parallel, which is how I use them normally in the motorhome anyway. Actually, let's do 60, double its rating. I don't know. Anyway, let's try that, see what it thinks. So this reckons 92% health, perfect health. Eh, I'm skeptical. I mean, although it says 30 amps max, they, I know they can deliver a lot more than that normally, but I've got a 46 milliohm resistance there. Not the best. I'm just going to reseat these connections in case these are a little bit dodgy. They may not be the best. We'll test it again. And it remembers the last setting. 33, there we go. And it reckons 100% health. Well, I don't believe that for a minute. All right, <laughs> because I know this thing cannot do the current. So let's increase the current rating, AGM, CCA. Let's do 100 amps. There you go. That's probably a bit more realistic. So again, 33 milliohms though, 76%. It's probably more realistic. That's fully charged, All right? Now, when you actually done the test, you can then see IR, which is internal resistance, volts, and EDC. So you go down, there's voltage, 12.7 volts, and EDC, 76 amps. So I'm guessing that means that's what it calculates the maximum current can be, is 76. So let's try the one which isn't fully charged now. Okay, so now on the other battery. Now these two batteries are actually old batteries, so these have been removed from the motorhome and been repurposed onto a UPS because they were showing the age in the motorhome, right? So they weren't perfect. So let's do this again, exactly the same setting, CCA, 100 amps. So here we go, 43% state of health. Internal resistance of 54 milliohms. Voltage 11.8, so it's very flat, all right? This is after been charging it up a little bit. This had probably two hours on the charger and it's still got to come up properly yet. And you need to see 43 amps. All right, so this one's definitely worse condition right now. So I'm gonna charge this up fully and we'll see what we get. So it's been 24 hours, it's been on charge. Here's the charger, this is on float charge, so it should be basically topped off, I suppose. We'll look at this again, see if it's anything different. All right, so here we go, we've got it hooked up. Now, in theory, I was actually thinking about this. These batteries, they should be rated to about 500 amp cranking. <laughs> and I'm only testing at 100 amps, well, specifying at 100 amps. So anyway, AGM, setting two, CCA, I've got a set of 100 amps, which is the rating anyway, but yeah, I think it actually should be more like 500. Let's see what we get. So 25.6 milliohms. State of 100%, okay. 12.8 volts, because I just took off charge, and it said 100 amps. Well, I might just crank up the um, setting then, and we'll see what happens by specifying a higher current. Let's do 300. Try 300. There you go, it says 32%. <laughs> Replace it. And it says 98 amps that time. So yeah, basically, this at best can do 100 amps now. That's not great. Having these both dip down to seven volts, not a good thing, as I expected, but I'm gonna see if I can recover them by just cycling, just keep charging one to the other, and see if they gradually recover. But I've got a reference here to see what they actually look like. Let's just have a little quick peek inside it. 
see what's going on inside there. I don't think it'd be much. There's probably a little microprocessor in there. Might be a blob chip even. And probably some kind of big resistor. And maybe some kind of oscillator or something. Let's have a look. Oh wow, it was a bit more than I thought it was going to be. Big resistors, we've got those. At least it's got some decent ones in there. It does have microcontroller and stuff like that. So it's using 4 wire measurements as you can see up here. Got some 10 watt and 20, I guess that means 20 ohm resistors. Yeah, there's a surprising amount going on in here. Got some power supply stuff, obviously. Because obviously the power's coming through this cable, so the cable's providing power and test as well. So this is obviously some power supply section, sounder, LCD connections. That's looking like it's in line with these. So that'd be a MOSFET suppression diode or potentially protection for polarity. It does. There you go. It's two, two diodes up there. So that's probably polarity protection up there. There's quite a few of these diodes around, so maybe it's got lots of polarity protection. Is that a QC pass sticker off? Date 2021, version 1.6, programming header. So we can see what these chips are. JF16218, is it? Looks like it. That's that one. These are upside down. Let's say MCP6004, is it? Turn it all the way up. MCP6004 and New Vuitton. MS51FB9AE. Not that exciting. Let's put it back together. So thanks a lot, Bangor, for sending this to me at no cost. That is much appreciated. Another tool to use. Always need more tools. I mean, you can even keep one of these things in the car if you want to quickly check a battery. You know, once in a while, it might be convenient. But I highly recommend you check your batteries at least every winter. All right, going into winter, check your batteries then because if your battery is a bit weak, in winter is when it's going to fail and you don't want to be stranded somewhere so I highly recommend you, you get one of these things and keep it in your car and check your battery as you go into winter and to see how the health is looking and you don't want to get stranded like I say and these aren't that expensive, there'll be links down below to these there's probably some discount codes as well I expect I'll get a discount code in Banggood so look out for that check out the other videos down below subscribe if you're not subscribed already Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget bye